I'm Brian and this is Duck River Homestead. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Massey Ferguson 1835E series. We bought this tractor about a year ago. We love it and we think you will too. Come along as we show you some of the points about it, some things that we like, some things that we don't like, and we'll go from there. Do you think you could run a homestead without a tractor? We had closed on our homestead in March of 2021 and we tried to do a bunch of clearing and we, we did make some good progress but it was very slow very very slow mostly it was manual labor with uh, loppers and a 20 inch lawnmower we I spent a lot of time researching what would be the best tractor uh, we I looked at Kubota Mahindra Massey Ferguson John Deere I looked at Bobcat, and they all have great tractors. Indra has great deals. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper, not that much, but it's it's a strong tractor. It has good support. We have a local Massey Ferguson dealer about 10 minutes from the homestead, and I really like supporting smaller businesses. And technically, they're a Massey Ferguson dealer, but they are a farm supply store. Uh, they'll sell seed and some other stuff like that. They do they do sell mostly tractors though. At the end of the day, it came down to I want to be able to have local support that I can trust. I want to small support small businesses locally. And Massey Ferguson just checked all the boxes. I'm able to go in. They remember me. They recognize me. They might know my name, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but when I call up and say, hey, I'm Brian and I've got the 1835E, they know who I am. And that's really cool, that's, that's amazing. So when I call and say, hey, I've got this issue or you know, this happened, they can you know, give me good support, which is really, really nice. As far as the 1835 series or the 1800 series, I was really looking for a compact tractor. Uh, I thought the subcompact was going to be a little bit too small. Now I was also looking at the 2600 series and uh, specifically I think the 2650 which is a 50 or 55 horsepower uh, Massey Ferguson. It's more of a uh, traditional uh, tractor and after we bought the 1835 I was sort of kicking myself for not getting the 2600 but the more and more and more and more that I use this tractor uh, especially in our in our uh, mostly wooded area with hills this four-wheel drive 1835 is amazing for what we need yes I would like to have a little bit more uh, lift on the on the on the front sometimes it just bogs down it doesn't bog down the engine doesn't bog down but it just it just it doesn't let me lift any any more than it says it's okay to lift uh, on one hand that's helpful uh, because it could easily tip the tractor if uh, if I'm lifting too much but on the other hand I feel like sometimes it should just let me lift more uh, at the end of the day I've I've been able to I have been able to lift or move pretty much anything that I've needed to I've had to have a little bit more ingenuity on that front but it, it works great so I wanted to talk a little bit about the setup that I have on this this is the mechanical drive. When I first went, I, I was looking for the hydrostatic, but I was okay with the mechanical. And the vehicle I drive is a stick shift, so it's, it's, that wasn't really a problem. What I was worried about was uh, drive speed when I'm running the, uh, the bush hog or uh, dealing with hills and things like that. And I found that that's not an issue at all. I have some hills on the property. It's not particularly flat. It's not, it's not a mountain by any means. But this tractor, uh, the brakes work great. And it's not like I need to, uh, you know, stand on the, on the gas pedal or the, you know, the accelerator while I'm, while I'm going. The low gear is so extremely low that if I'm on a hill and I need the, all the traction that I, that I need, I just let it out and I go. I mean, I don't ever have to touch the gas pedal 
or the, di the diesel pedal uh, at all unless I want to rev up the engine to get a little bit faster or if I use the throttle position uh, lever I I'm not entirely sure what that's called to set the engine speed so I was a little bit worried about how it would handle with how fast I'd be going when I was running the uh, the, the bush hog and that's just not really an issue at all so we basically got 16 speeds eight forward eight reverse they call it the synchro shuttle I'm not entirely sure what that actually means the tires that I chose on this were uh, the R1 ag, ag tires not the uh, construction tires and they are incredible as far as gaining traction the mechanical gearbox with these these tires I have not had any issue at all doing anything uh, it's the great traction uh, I've never been bogged down with if I'm pulling something um, or pushing pushing something it's got all the power in the world and the low gears are incredible for when I'm you know knocking down small trees or things like that let's talk a little bit about what we have done or changed to the tractor so we filled the rear tires with uh, methanol and I'm not entirely sure why the tractors don't come already with with filled tires uh, a lot of people call this beet juice or um, it's technically just rear tire ballast and it adds uh, weight to the rear of your tractor so that when you're using your uh, your loader or anything on the front of the tractor it doesn't uh, lift the tires off the, the rear tires off the ground as easily second thing we did was add the rear remote which eventually I plan on adding a hydraulic top link uh, that's going to be really beneficial when using the box blade or other things like that the major thing that we've done was add the third function to the tractor to the front loader and this has been pivotal in how we use the tractor most of the time I have the grapple mounted to our quick attach in the back I have the bush hog that's sort of the standard setup that we've got going on having the front grapple has really changed everything I've been doing a lot more clearing of of our uh, forests and clearing out a lot of the underbrush so and in smaller trees so that uh, the forest can thrive and so that we can actually walk through it's more it feels more park like it's pretty amazing and without this it seriously would take so much longer to get anything done the grapple has changed everything and before I was using just the loader bucket and I tried to you know pile brush or whatever in it and it would just fall out and it was it was a pain I tried the forks it would fall off that but having that that articulating thumb or whatever you want to call it is is incredible so Putting a grapple on this tractor with its form size in the woods is great. I was looking at the 2800 series. I have a friend that, that has a friend that has one of the 2800 series and that's great. When I saw it, I'm just thinking like this thing is a huge tractor, which would be great if I had a bunch of flat fields. But with these woods, this tractor, this compact size is great. One thing I don't particularly like about the tractor is the locations of these lights. Uh, I've already had to replace one of them from from hitting a tree. I'd much rather have them be fender mounted But this is what we got that was an expensive mistake. I've only done it once and it It wasn't that hard to, to change out. I think some of the favorite implements that we've got for the tractor Definitely the grapple the bush hog is a must. I've used the box blade a few times It was extremely helpful when we were doing our garden. I have the forks which have proven invaluable when loading or unloading trucks. I was having a really hard time finding UTVs for the homestead and I found the option of buying a dump bucket that I could put on my three-point hitch. That was extremely helpful. It helped so that I could carry things like chainsaws around. Uh, I could ch carry uh, different tools to where I was working and that was really helpful. 
It also had the added benefit of adding a uh, extra ballast. I could back into a pile of dirt and I had even more ballast for digging, which is very helpful. The stump bucket, that thing's incredible. If you've ever tried to pull a, a stump out with a tractor, it's not really meant for that. Adding the stump bucket made it so that we could dig out a stump very easily. One tool that I'm extremely excited about getting is the wood chipper. It's coming in a couple weeks. We have several brush piles that are growing out of hand and we need to tame them, cut them down, and start mulching. We're going to turn that mulch into compost. Once that compost is ready, we're going to sow our spring garden with that. So the E-Series has these headlights on them. They're just standard incandescent headlights, nothing special to them. What I really like about the M series is they've got a nice, nicer headlight on it. So these just have the standard incandescent headlights. Nothing really special to them. I, I do like the, what, the way that they look. They've done a good job of making it look like the M series uh, without actually having the quality of the M series headlights. It's a good money saving point. I mean, how often are we doing tractor work at night? With that said, the location of the headlights aren't exactly the greatest when you're doing loader work because the uh, loader often blocks the headlights. Nothing you can really do with that unless we were to uh, mount some headlights like right here. That would be pretty cool actually, if that were an option. I do like the location of the fuel tank uh, it, it's right close to the ground, so when you're lifting up your fuel can, it's really easy to get it in there. It's not like you have to lift it up super high. This is pretty cool. The downside though is it has a hose that likes to get caught on various items. This hose fell off a few times in the first few months of getting the tractor, and I'd be working, I'd be working, I'd look down and notice that my fuel gauge was going down, I'd smell diesel, and I'd know, well, that hose got caught again. I ended up moving the hose around a little bit, I took the, uh, the, the floorboards off, moved it out, resecured it, haven't had that issue since. The location of the fuel separator, on the other hand, is uh, questionable. I must have snagged it or it wasn't tightened properly and the fuel separator, the, the fuel water separator, uh, the drain plug fell out and <laughs> that was fun. So I plugged the hole with a stick with a rubber band wrapped around it and that it got the job done until I could get the new drain plug in. go over the uh, controls here really quick. I've had this a year now, 155 hours on it, and uh, I've gotten pretty good at uh, running this thing. So here's the uh, the shuttle for forward, neutral, reverse. It works great. I love this thing. Down here we have got our high, neutral, low. In order to start it up, it's got to be in neutral. On the left down here, we've got our clutch pedal. We've got our shifter. We've got our brakes. Now, I've never used this function at all, but we can take this off. You can use just the left just the right brake. It's it, it can help lock the transmission so that if the left wheel is spinning uh, you can get the right to go or it just helps you turn really efficiently. This is the fuel accelerator pedal. Uh, it's not really it's hard to call it an accelerator pedal because you're not really driving very fast. Over here you'll see the throttle position 
right about here is where we're going to have it for uh, running the PTO. I would like to have the soft start PTO like the uh, M series has, but we just got our PTO right here. Our uh, three point lift. We installed this for the, uh, for the rear remote. Down here, you've got four wheel drive, two wheel drive. This controls the speed in which the PTO drops. And then right here is your differential lock. Since we got the third function, you can see the hydraulic lines coming out of the center of the loader. And we've got a button right here that controls the function of the th third function. So you press it down, this tells it to now activate the third function. You still have your standard functionality. And then when you press the button, this opens the thumb, this closes the thumb. What comes standard with these tractors is the small utility toolbox. Mostly have some chains and other items in here. You can see where we've got the rear remote installed. Now this only does support a Cat 1 three-point hitch, but honestly that's really all you need, especially for the things that we're doing around here on the homestead. Over here we've got right turn signal, left turn signal, regular beams, high beams, hazards. These are good when you're right, uh, driving down the, down the road, make sure that people see you. The seat's actually uh, incredibly comfortable. It slides forward slides back. It's got springs and it rides really comfortably. Well that's all I got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. We have a bunch of videos building out the homestead. We're building out our home, finishing up the sawmill barn, building out, actually building the sawmill barn, building out a solar kiln, finishing up the utility shed, and hopefully we're going to be moving in in the next couple weeks. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. We love this tractor and we think that you will too. It's a great choice and it has served us well and we hope that it's going to serve us well for a long time. Thank you so much.